Hey guys, and welcome back to the show. I am your host, Megan Hardy, and I'm the founder of Fitness Uncharted, which is a women's health and fitness coaching company I designed to help you build muscle, lose fat, and improve your metabolism so that you can feel healthy and confident in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond. And today, guys, we're going to talk about what is the right body fat percentage for your body. Um, And we're going to talk a little bit about first to start things off with BMI versus body fat, but then what is the right percentage of body fat for your body in order to look the way that you want it to look? I know people love data and metrics and numbers and something kind of to shoot for. Um, And I know also if you go and Google it, like you'll probably find a wide range of like you know, quote unquote, healthy body fat percentages. So we're going to break that down a little bit here based off of what your goals might be and what might be best for your body. Uh, But before we jump in, I just want to share that I just got back from a conference. I feel like I've had a ton of conferences recently. So anyway, by the time this posts or I release this episode, it'll probably be a, a month or so out. So Anyway, had a lot of conferences recently and um, been traveling a good bit. And the last one was short, but intense, as in uh, it was just about a day and a half um, on a Friday night. It was like from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. And then the next day we were back at 7.30 a.m. all the way until 4 p.m. So short and sweet, but a lot packed into that short amount of time. Anyway, food wise, I feel like I am still recovering Um, today was kind of my recovery mode day. We got back yesterday from the conference and just like, oh my gosh, talk about you are what you eat. And when you eat crappy food, you feel crappy. Uh, we stayed at a hotel. There was like a little quote unquote continental breakfast. Um, and I basically got the eggs or basically egg substitute. I don't think they're really eggs. You know, those like great mushy scrambled eggs that are at continental breakfasts. Um, but I had like just, you know, a big old plate full of those and then some raisin bran cereal, um, just had what was available there. <laughs> and so I did end up having two bowls, massive, you know, heaping bowls of raisin bran cereal. And then also my husband grabbed a muffin and he just wanted a bite of the muffin. So guess who finished his muffin? Um, so already I was like not off to a great start. I didn't need the second bowl of cereal plus the muffin, um, gosh, what else did I have? I feel like I had something else, but anyway, that started off the morning. We did get like a, almost a three mile walk in, um, before the conference started that morning. So that was great. Um, but then they provided lunch for us and it was Chick-fil-A, which God love Chick-fil-A fantastic. But on top of the continental breakfast situation, then, you know, also sitting all day in the conference and so not really getting to move a whole lot. Um, granted we were up and down a good bit. But, uh, then for lunch, it was Chick-fil-A sandwich and chips and cookies. And so your girl had her Chick-fil-A sandwich with two packets of Chick-fil-A sauce. Cause you know, if you're going to do it, you got to do it right with Chick-fil-A sauce. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I love me some Chick-fil-A sauce. Um, and then really like the, ch- the chicken sandwich or like fries or nuggets or just a, a vehicle to get Chick-fil-A sauce in my mouth. Uh, but I had two packets of Chick-fil-A sauce, my chicken sandwich, a bag of sun chips. And then my husband figured out, Oh, he was at this conference with me too. And he figured out, Oh, we can get more sandwiches. Um, so he went and got another one and I split that with him, um, on top of that. And then also had two cookies and, Oh my gosh, my stomach was in turmoil after this. Cause this was just up to lunchtime. Like this wasn't like for the whole day. This was just like, it was like noon or like 1 PM and all this mixture when it, normally I'm having my very standard breakfast and I'm like, you know, eating a little bit more nourishing foods and I'm not having this massive quantity of like crap to be honest. Um, and so I felt like crap. So anyway, all that to say you are what you eat and the whole, like, you know, I'll just have fun. Like, Oh, it's just like the exception, whatever. Like, you know, don't worry about it. This and that it's like, it's not even that it's not that I'm worried about like my physique or my body in that sense, or like putting on weight. It's like, I don't feel good. You know, I think that's the funny thing about, you know, when people are going on vacation or something like that, they feel this need oftentimes to just overindulge because that's quote unquote what you do. But it's like, why is that our, why is that our perception of having a good time? Like, don't we want to feel good to have a good time? So I think there's a balance to find. I'll probably do a whole other podcast episode about this, 
but it's just interesting. Like, I feel like the American perspective, uh, maybe this is worldwide, but especially for Americans is like, if we're going to have a good time, we're going to eat a bunch of crappy food and overindulge. But I'm like, I, I didn't even feel good. Like I was like, Oh, I felt so inflamed. And like, my stomach was in knots, um, you know, just ugh, after that. And I'm like, I'm not even enjoying myself and I can't even be fully present because my stomach hurts so bad. So anyway, just had to share that with you guys. There'll probably be a coming podcast episode about it because I feel like it's that's an important topic too, but let's get to the topic at hand. So let's talk about it. Body fat percentage. What is the right body fat percent for you, for your goals? So let's first talk about BMI versus body fat. So oftentimes when I'm talking with ladies and gentlemen, but, um, I hear, you know, they're like, I don't know what my BMI should be or my body fat percentage or, and, or they're like, my BMI is high. Or like I came back and the doctor said I need to get my BMI lower. It says I'm obese or this or that BMI is they're like, I would just throw BMI out the window to be honest. Let's just look at body fat because BMI is your, your, um, just looking at your height and your weight. So that's your body mass index. And that's just looking at your height and your weight. That is not looking at your body composition at all. It is not looking at what is your body made up of how much of that body weight is muscle mass, right? It's not looking at that at all versus body fat percentage is taking into consideration your body fat percent, uh, as opposed to your lean muscle mass. So it's a way better indicator versus BMI, which is literally just height and weight. So it could be like, okay, me, Megan, let's say, you know, like around 160 pounds, five foot eight going on five foot nine and, you know, versus someone else who has less muscle mass and is, you know, 150 pounds, five foot eight going on five foot nine. But let's say they have half of the muscle mass as me our BMI would say like, we're the same because it's height and weight. Right. So my husband actually comes back from, or at least he used to, I'd be curious what he is now, but he had a lot of muscle mass in the past. He still has a good bit of muscle, but he's also had some injuries and surgeries he's recovering from, but he has always come back from the doctor as quote unquote obese. And that's because it's not taking into consideration his muscle mass. He was packed with muscle. So he is not obese. He's the farthest thing from obese or he, and he used to be as well when he had even more muscle. And so that's just silly to be like, he's obese. So that's why BMI, I would throw it out the window. I would not base any of your fitness goals off of BMI. Let's look at one step in the right direction is body fat percentage. So we're going to talk about this um, looking at it for females in particular, um, because that's probably the majority of who is listening to this podcast. Um, if you're a man listening by chance, DM me and we can talk more about it, but we're just, we're going to apply this to females right now. Um, and this is based off of guys off of DEXA scan results. So a DEXA scan is, um, one of the best, um, best ways to measure your muscle mass and your body fat. So there's also like the in, an in-body scan, which you can get at like a lot of gyms will offer an in-body scan. And then of course you have like the smart scales. I would not, not count on a smart scale to tell you the right thing, but a DEXA scan is like top notch. That's like kind of the, the best of the best of the body scans. Um, and so we're looking at that versus, you know, some of the, you know, body fat percentages that you see online are not going to be looking at this kind of application base from the DEXA scan. So, um, so that's what we'll be looking at. Also, if you missed the episode that I did, um, with Melissa Ambrose, um, we talked all about DEXA scans. So go back and give that episode a listen. Um, cause we talk about like what those scans can show you and tell you, et cetera. So I won't get into all of that, but we will break down the body fat percentages. So let's talk about essential body fat. That's the first thing. So essential body fat for women, like the minimum is around 12% of like, okay, essential, like we need that amount of body fat. It's really like 10 to 13%. But if you're looking at DEXA scan results, like what we've seen is when women are getting down below like 14%, they're starting to lose their periods. And your periods, you guys, like if you're a menstruating woman is a really great indicator of health, like your fertility, whether or not you are trying for kids, whether or not you want kids, that's not even on the table, whatever your fertility and your menstrual cycle and having healthy hormones, 
those are all indicators of your health. And so if you are not having regular periods, that's a problem. Um, if you are, if you have really heavy PMS symptoms, that's also a problem. But what we, they find is when women are getting below that 14% body fat, they're losing their periods. And so that's not a good indication of health. They might be shredded and this is where they might be stage ready. Like, especially if they're competing in like a bikini competition, but it's not sustainable and it's not actually not healthy. It's not the healthiest thing for your body. Um, but that is like essential. Like you can, you can still function, but when you're getting down below that 14% body fat, you're probably not feeling great either. Hormones are going crazy. You're probably very hangry. You're probably not sleeping great. Like you're, you're not feeling good. And so that's up to you. If you think that's worth it, especially if you're someone competing, it may be worth it for a short period of time, but it's really not sustainable to be that low body fat percentage for and a long time or extended period of time. If you want to be shredded, like if you are like, I want to look stage ready or I want to be in really lean shredded shape, but I want to be healthy, then you could probably shoot for like 17 to 18 to 19% body fat, like somewhere in that hot, those really high teens, um, like 17 to 19%, like you're going to look really, really shredded. Um, you're going to, you're going to look like you work out. You're going to be like, people are gonna be like, dang, that girl's got muscle. Like I can see it. Um, so you're going to see it. You could probably see some, some visible abs. Right. Um, I think my DEXA scan, I don't remember now, but I think mine, the last time I did it, like, oh gosh, like six to nine months ago or something like that was, I think I was 17 point something, 17.5 or 17.6 or something like that. And I feel very satisfied with where I'm at as far as, you know, looking like I work out and seeing muscle definition. And I also feel really healthy. Like it has not, it has not, you know, um, impacted my health. If anything, I feel very healthy. I don't feel like I'm too low body fat percentage. I sleep amazing. My hormones are all in a good place. I recently got labs done and my hormones look good. Like, so you can be healthy and also very, very lean and quote unquote ripped around that like 17 to 19%. You can also be very healthy and fit at like, let's say like really anywhere from 16 to like 21% body fat. So I would say like, if you are in that range, like, again, people are going to go like, oh, this chick works out. Like they will notice that. Um, and so like 16 to 21% you can, you can be healthy still. You can still have normal periods. Um, you'll see, like, as I said, like that's, a, that's a, a pretty wide range. Like those, when you get down that low, like that 5% range is pretty big. Um, so even dropping one or 2% body fat at that point makes a really big difference, but you can be looking very fit and also be very healthy and have healthy hormone balance, um, in that like 16 to 21% range. A lot of the ladies that I tend to work with, they might be like just at the higher end of this range. Um, like maybe they're closer to 20 to 21 or 22% body fat, and they just want to take it up a notch. So we start working together because it's actually harder when you're that close to your goal. It's like, you're that far away from it. Like if you have a lot of weight to lose, that's often actually easier because your body's more willing to release that body weight. But when you get really close and especially when you've doing this, been doing the same thing for a long time, you've got to switch it up and you've also got to dial things in, in a different way, um, to be able to pull off that last couple percent of body fat. Um, and also to build the muscle at the same time or to have to maintain the muscle while you pull off body fat. So that's a lot of the women that I work with. They just want to take it up a notch. They're like, I'm not, I'm in good shape. I want to be in better shape. Like I want to look like I work out as hard as I do. Um, and I also want to be able to sustain this without always having to be cutting or dieting or whatever. Um, and that's what we teach them how to do because that's where my personal goal is to be healthy and I want longevity, but I also want to be bikini ready year round. And I want to be able to sustain that year round, um, uh, without feeling like, you know, I'm always dieting and I don't, I haven't cut in forever. So, um, so anyway, that's a lot of the women that we work with. Um, but also an acceptable body fat range would be like 25 to 35% body fat, um, could be kind of acceptable. So that's again, also a lot of women that I work with, they're coming maybe more in that 25 to 35% body fat, you know, really they're in the accept an acceptable range, but they, they really don't look like they're 
in the kind of shape that they want to be in. Um, you know, they're like, I feel fluffy or I know I, they, I often hear, you know, I know I have some muscle mass underneath of here, but I just can't see it. Like there's just that Michelin man outer layer of, you know, skin and body fat that I can't seem to reduce to show it. Um, so that might be you, um, you could be in that like 25 to 35% range, which again is acceptable, but a lot of the women I work with want to get lower down close to the, you know, high teens or low twenties. Um, and that's, again, if your goal is to look lean, you know, have some muscle definition, look like you work out and do it in a healthy way, that would be kind of like an ideal body fat range. But what I want to talk to you guys about too, is that something really important to look at is, um, factors, other factors that play into this one being like your genetics. So, you know, it's like, where do you, where do you carry your weight? So like, do you carry your weight in your hips and thighs? Like, do you have that really cute hourglass figure? Um, you know, if so, but like, you're like, maybe you're stacked. Um, like if you guys watch love is blind, any of my love is blind, um, viewers, like, so good guilty pleasure show, um, reality TV show, but there's a girl on there. Her name is AD shout out AD. Um, and she is quote unquote stacked, AKA she has a snatched waist, tiny waist and big old booty and just the cutest figure, right? Her body fat percentage is probably higher than maybe that range. I just suggested above being, you know, the healthy and fit or like the, um, you know, the more shredded female range, but she's got the cutest shape ever. And I'm like, I would never tell her to go lose body fat because she's carrying it in all the right places. Okay. She's got a very small waist. So no like visceral fat. And that's like the most dangerous fat is to have that fat around your midsection organs. And she's carrying it in her butt and thighs. Like she's got, you know, thick thighs save lives guys. And she's got the booty. She's got like a shelf for a booty, you know, like goals. So, you know, for her, her body fat percentage is probably higher than the range I just suggested, but that's perfect for her. Right. So it depends on like where you carry your weight and your genetics. Another funny example to give you is when I did my, my DEXA scan, when that, the results came back for that, I carry my weight in, in a funny, uh, section of my body. Um, you know, this is very much genetics for me, but I like upper body is very lean, stays very lean. And that's usually the case for most women, um, for most people in general. But when you lose weight, you'll notice your face starts to get leaner and then your arms and upper body, and then your lower half is usually the last thing to lean out. Um, but for me, I carry most of my weight in like my inner thighs and my outer hip, um, a little bit right there and then my calves. So it was hilarious because those were the areas they light up like a different color with the body fat areas. And so they were like lit up, you know, my inner thighs around my like outer hip leg area and then my calves. And I, you guys, I just have like, I have ham hocks is what I call them for calves. Like I, my husband and I joke because he's got like dinosaur calves and I've got these thick, thick calves that came from my, my mom. I'm like, thank you, mom. But my mom, my sister and I, like we all have very thick calves and it doesn't matter how much I work them or how lean or how cut I get. I have thicker calves. So if I could get my calf, uh, body fat down, shoot, I could probably be another one or 2% lower body fat because that's where I carry a lot of it. But am I going to stress over the fact that I have fattier calves? No, like I'm fine with the rest of my body. It's all good, but that does play into my overall body fat percentage, right? So like you have to consider factors like that, like your genetics, where do you carry your weight? What is a healthy body fat percentage for you? that might be different than the next person. My body type is very different than AD's body type from Love is Blind, which is very different from someone's body type, like, I don't know, Taylor Swift or Beyonce or whatever, right? Like very different body types. And that really does play a factor and a role in what do you want your body fat percentage to be? Um, and then another thing too is muscle mass. So if you think about it, the more muscle that you have, that if you increase your muscle percentage, what's naturally going to happen out of total body weight, right? So if we take total body weight and let's say, let's just say it's there, there's other things that apply here too, but let's just say it's fat mass and muscle mass. If you increase muscle mass, what happens percentage wise to body fat out of a hundred percent, if muscle mass, let's say muscle mass percentage goes up to 60%, then 
what is your body fat percentage going to be? That's going to go down to 40%, right? We bring muscle mass up to 70%. Body fat naturally means it's going to be 30%, right? So that's how you can also manipulate your body fat percentage is people who have more muscle mass are going to have a lower body fat percentage. So I think as women, especially we get so hung up on just losing body fat and we don't pay enough attention to building muscle mass, which is another way of looking lean and muscular and defined. Let's go back to the BMI example of the two people, let's say who are both five foot eight, 150 pounds, right? Or five foot seven, 150 pounds. If one has a lot more muscle, they're going to look leaner and tighter and more toned than the person who has, you know, let's say half the muscle mass and more body fat, but they weigh the same amount. So, you know, muscle mass plays a huge role in your overall body fat percentage. And that's something that people often neglect. So look at those kind of factors. Um, and then also ask yourself these questions, ask yourself, how are you feeling? So, like I said, like, you know, getting it down into that very low essential body fat percentage range or under that, you're not going to feel good. Like, is it worth it? And this is especially talking to any of my ladies out there who may have a little bit of body dysmorphia. Like you might feel, especially this is often the case for competitors who come off the stage. You weren't, your body was not meant to look stage that stage ready and that lean at all the time that shredded, right? But we can kind of get this body dysmorphia of like, oh, that's, that's, I want to be able to maintain that or look that way, even though I feel like complete crap. It's like, no, it's really important. How are you feeling at that body fat percentage? Or even the numbers that I just gave you of even, even being, you know, 16 to 21% body fat, like, where do you feel if you want to look, you know, really fit? It's like, where do you feel your best? I was just talking with someone the other day who said she feels her best at like 22 or 23% body fat. That's what you should probably aim for. That's a very, very healthy body fat percentage. And that's so important that you actually feel good. And the other things to look at too, guys, this is just a number. Body fat percentage is also just a number. It's very, um, very helpful and very telling, unlike BMI. But also let's look at other metrics. Like how are your clothes fitting? Especially this goes for anyone who doesn't have access to maybe a body scan, right? How are your clothes fitting? How are your progress pictures looking? How about your measurements? Like I would highly encourage you taking waist and hip measurements because that waist to hip ratio is a great way to track progress because your hips might be going up because you're putting on a booty, which is fantastic, you know, but your waist measure measurements might be going down. So you're getting that hourglass figure, that cute shape, you know, in your progress pictures, you might notice changes. If you're already very lean um, or very close to goal body weight, Measurements probably won't tell you as much. I will say for me, like my measurements went up, um, as I, when I was really lean, but I started putting on abs. <laughs> so I started building more ab muscle. Um, I, my waist measurements went up some and that's okay. Cause I actually like my appearance better and I feel really great, but my measurements went, went up no big deal. So maybe for you, depending on where you're at, maybe progress pictures are the best thing to look at. You can even do, especially this goes for my people who are really looking for those small changes happening. And especially if you need that encouragement and those small wins, I would encourage you not only taking front side and back progress pictures, um, and doing it first thing in the morning in the same outfit, same lighting, same angle. So you can really catch any changes that have ha occurred. Um, but also you can even do a video. So literally I, I do, you know, fa forward facing arms up and then double bicep flex to the side with your arms straight out in front of you, like Frankenstein style, and then pictures facing backwards. And again, in a double bicep flex with your arms up and flexed. So that way you can see any additional muscle, um, you're doing the same poses. So it's not just like, you know, a different angle throwing it off, but a video can be really helpful for you to notice those small changes as well. So you could literally take a video while you move through those poses too. Um, so those are other ways just to track progress, things that aren't, you know, numbers like, you know, a body fat percentage or whatever. So where you might want to be is going to be different than the next person. Like your healthy body fat percentage, it might look different to people don't necessarily just like, just because you want to get shredded, like Susie 
or Karen over here, you know, doesn't mean you need to be the same body fat percentage as her. You could look just as good as Susie Q or Karen K or whatever, um, with a different body fat percentage. And because that might be a healthy, you know, very fit body fat percentage for you. So if you need help with that or anything like, um, you know, have questions around how specifically that could apply to you. If you've gotten your body fat percentage done and you're curious or want to know like where, what you should maybe aim for, um, or if you need help in that process of getting there, um, shoot me a DM more than happy to chat with you. You can also book a call with me. Um, we can talk more about one-on-one coaching. The link to book a call with me is in the show notes as well as my social media handles. But at the end of the day, you guys, just like the scale, don't get hung up on a number. So this is where, you know, again, what body fat percentage you think you need to be might be different than what the body fat percentage is that you actually need to be, or that's actually healthiest for you. So just like the scale, I say, throw the scale out the window because it's not the best measure of progress and people get way too hung up on it. Like it's actually annoying how much like gravity and like self-worth we get out of the scale. Like it's so annoying. It's like probably actually I should like next time ask someone asked me what my biggest pet peeve is. I need to remember that that's one of my biggest pet peeves. My other ones are like hearing people chew and also dogs licking. Like I cannot stand a dog, like repetitively licking themselves or anything else like disgusting. But anyway, also how obsessed women are, especially with the scale. It's so annoying because it so does not matter. And it, why it's so annoying to me is it cripples you. It cripples so many women from building the muscle that they need to actually look and feel the way they want to, because they get so hyper-focused on the freaking scale. But anyway, so just like the scale, don't get hung up on a number and body fat percentage included. So just because I shared some of these numbers with you guys of like some of these, um, ranges don't get hung up on that body fat percentage number either. Okay. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and my little rant there at the end. Sorry about that, but I hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.